When you're using herbs for the elderly, one of the things to be aware of is that their bodies are a little bit different than they were when they're younger, and you may need to reduce the dosage. If a person is more fragile, if a person is lighter in weight, you know, these things are going to make a difference. If a person has an impaired digestive system or some other medical problem, or if they're on a medication for some reason, like a high blood pressure medication or something like that, you're going to have to alter the dosage of the herbs accordingly. Uh, medicine has got a lot of uh, immense amount of side effects because um, the chemicals are not balanced on either side. Whereas every plant and every herb has got its own built-in methods of balance. And one part for the digestion, another part for the um, secretions, one part for the expectoration, another part for mood. And here are all these inbuilt factors that um, medicine has taken away by making one golden bullet. And it's, we need the gold, golden bullet but we need a balanced golden bullet that has got all the other ancillary parts of um, chemicals, pharmaceuticals that are there, and they're there in the plants. Organ grape is a bitter. So it, what that means is that if you take it before meals, it actually stimulates the digestive enzymes to start working prior to the food being ingested. So what that means is, is that it's going to help you more properly digest your food. When in Europe, we used to have what was called aperitifs before dinner, and what was in those um, aperitifs were bitter herbs to stimulate digestion so there's been a long history of using them unfortunately now the aperitifs don't have the bitter herbs in them and we've lost the effect when I enter my crondom or my elderly wise woman years a plant I want nearby is angelica angelica is extremely helpful for any kind of digestive disorder and it also stimulates appetite which is one thing I want to hold on to through my old age. And one of my favourites is one known as Avena sativa, commonly known as, as oats, uh, which, it, which is a great balance in herbs, nourishes the nervous system. So as we age, often our nervous system will start slowing down. So it's a great building, nourishing tonic for the nervous system. Um, that's a generally a good one, a fairly safe one that can be taken for a long period. Specifically, one that comes to mind is an herb called oat straw. Oat straw is very high in a compound called silica. It's actually a mineral. And the research is out there now that shows that this molecule, this mineral, can help with the absorption of calcium. So that's really important. So everyone, um, you know, that's, you know, in their croning years, I always get them to take um, oat straw in a tea form to support them so that this assimilation can start to happen. So oat straw is wonderful. It's also a nervine. So when we're, you know, the, when we're working, I'm working with people that are a little uptight as well, it helps just to support that nervous system as well. So it's a wonderful herb for the elderly. In the conditions that any of us have during our adult life carry on in, into older age. And there are many conditions like arthritis, insomnia, high blood pressure, obesity that um, can, can be dealt with using essential oils. Nice oils like mandarin, geranium, ginger, benzoin can help with poor circulation and certain essential oils for high blood pressure like lavender, ylang ylang, orange. And old men and old women, they get cold. And the importance of having a pair of warm feet in the, uh, in the middle of our back is very, very valuable. But importance of the fire foods of the heart. And these is ginger, garlic, cayenne, heating herbs. And these are the herbs that give, let alone the ability to feel the warmth that courses through our veins, but it also has a wonderful stimulant effect. 
Another good herb for seniors is crotagus or hawthorn berries. And the reason is, is it's a cardiovascular tonic. What that means is it improves your circulation and strengthens your heart. So it's wonderful for preventing strokes and heart disease. For the elderly, I think I'd like to pick something like ginkgo because I think it's excellent for the circulation. It's a really good heart tonic, really good healing for the heart. And um, it actually helps to bring the circulation up to the head. So things like Alzheimer's, you know, it's really, really good to just to, just to sort of improve um, the general health, you know. The ginkgo is one as we age, and the ginseng also is a pretty good tonic of that. Um, so those, those are the first two herbs that we would encourage. But we also would encourage just equally as well, I think, that physical activity and also keeping our interests up and our psyche. I think that that's very important too. Probably more important than the herbs, but the herbs do have some biochemical impact on the physiology of the body. The ability to have a plant which is called Panax quinquifolium which is the, the herb of the North Americas, a royal adaptogen which is able to stimulate the thyroid, stimulate the heart, stimulate the lungs, stimulate the intestine, stimulate the kidneys, stimulate everything. And it is the one single simple most herb that I, you can add to any other herbal mixture that you can uh, need to in order to help rejuvenate. You're uh, really old and uh, in your 80s and all your friends are dying. It's, uh, it's very much a spiritual journey at that point of which th the medieval times, uh, they had their herbs that helped the meditative practice. And those are the types of herbs that we might employ, the sage, the thyme, and um, the reflective type of herbs to enhance the uh, meditative qualities of the human psyche. Those I think would be important. I see herbs as being the, not the boundary, not the barrier, but the forefront of the new medicine.